Okay, my name is Donna Burke. I am from Texas. I don't have a house in Texas, but now I'm from all over. And I travel with my three canine kiddos, I call them, Buddy, Gracie, and Lucy. Lucy just came to us right before this trip, and she has adapted really well to RV lifestyle. And the other guys, they know RV lifestyle. They're wearing collars that say, I rough it. So um, if you want to know a little bit about myself, uh, I love people. I've always loved people all my life. It started when I was two years old, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on my, my previous, you know, my early life, but I will tell you that when I was two years old, my dad came home from work, and he asked my mom, where's the baby? She says, she's out in the backyard. He says, no, she's not. The gate's open, and her bike is gone. He says, I know where she is. And he went around the, neighbor, the neighborhood to the other street, and there was my tricycle in front of a house, and I was in having cookies and milk. Then when I was 10 years old, my grandmother took me to the beach, and I met the people at the next blanket, and we wrote letters for about eight years. So just a couple of years ago, my sister, who's nine, uh, eight years older than me, said, you were always like that. I always loved that about you. I want to be like you. So that's me. See how bad? Yeah, come on. They RV dogs, they rough it. Come on, Gracie. Come on, Lucy. Come on, get warm. Windy, windy. Welcome to our abode. Here we are. But four years ago, that took a change, and God wasn't having it. So, like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on my early life, but I do want to talk about one thing, and then I'll fast forward. When I was 19, I was in a head-on collision. I was the driver. I was in a Volkswagen, and we were literally run over by a semi. My two friends were killed, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with the old Bugs, the old Beatles Volkswagens. They had a little window off to the side that they called the fin. I was wedged into the fin. My two friends were killed and I was out of the hospital in two days. So that showed me that God had something he wanted me here for. I will say I was raised Catholic and uh, through a girl from India that I worked with, I accepted the Lord two months before my 25th birthday. I was always searching for God more, trying to be more of a better Catholic. Finally, I found the Lord and he knew where my heart was and I just, the Holy Spirit just worked on me. So fast forward to when my older life. I um, always wanted to be married. I spent years of preparing. I would go to seminars, I'd read, I'd do everything. And I just always trusted God and prayed. And I um, would ask the Lord, please prepare my husband for me, whoever it is, for the kind of husband that I need, and please prepare me to be the kind of wife that he needs. And I trusted God for a long time. <laughs> when I was 48, I met a wonderful man. And um, God put us together. And when we were married, I was 49, he was 62, and we had our first kiss at the marriage altar. He had a fifth wheel when we got married, and we he would kid around saying, you married me for my fifth wheel. But we always, both always loved RVing, and we felt immediately called to an RV ministry. So um, we had the RV, and we also had the house. So it was kind of a financial strain on us with the RV. So after a couple of years, we went to our pastor, Lee, who is our pastor friend in our church, and we asked counsel what should we do and he agreed with us in prayer for a few months we went back and he said well it's obvious it's a financial strain so sell it and when you're ready there'll be another rv and we said well what about the equity you know we'll never make up the equity how will we do it and he said if you're to have an rv ministry there'll be another rv when you're ready so there's a lot of story to this a lot of testimony for the time it took how we sold who we sold everything but I won't go into the detail. I'll just say that we finally sold it, traded the truck, got a little van, said this is our RV. And three weeks later, a man that my husband did work for called him up, took him to his house, and handed him to the key to a 36-foot Winnebago diesel pusher. They only made six of those Luxors that year. 
It had everything we needed for the ministry, including a TV outside, everything. So this was pretty amazing. Handed us the key and it, it was, a, like I said, a diesel pusher, hardly any mileage on it already. So uh, we took a couple of years to really perfect it. Our church was starting to go digital. And finally, the January that we were to launch the ministry, my husband was diagnosed with cancer. But we did it that summer. It was tremendous success. And we went, we had short term goals, long term goals. Short term were to work in the local campgrounds in our state. Long term down the road, we would bring on other people, go around the country, kind of like somebody else that I just met. So anyway, um, that was our plan. And that whole year that we were in cancer center and uh, going through treatment, God was using us mightily at the cancer center. So the following January, my husband passed. Um, and I, I never got angry at him for dying. I never got angry at God for his dying. But I did say, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna ask God, why? Why did I only have my husband that I waited for for only eight years? And why did you call us to a ministry, give us the motor home, and then he's gone? But you know what? I say when I get to the gates, I'm gonna ask him, but it won't matter. And it doesn't matter. I never got angry. I just had to always trust God. So um, eight years after my husband passed, my mom was living with me and she passed after a horrendous situation that um, I just came home from church one Sunday and I sat down and I said, I got to have a life. And I wasn't big on technical stuff, but I got on my phone and God led me to a company where I could drive to get my motor home and I could get a lot of money off. So I drove, took my dogs, got in the car, loaded everything with Walmart furnishings from my new motor home and drove to Iowa to pick up a new class C, 32 foot class C motor home. And I drove home with this 50 feet of vehicle and I had no idea what I was doing. I always would load the motor home with the food and the clothes and my husband did everything else. So I got home got a hold of a good Sam Club and said, help. I learned everything. And um, that was my plan. But here we go. I did short weekends out at the lake at home. I was still working. So this was my change four years ago. Um, four years ago this month, I retired. And I. it was at the start of COVID. As soon as I retired, COVID was the next week. So I sat outside on a rocker at a Cracker Barrel in my hometown with no cars on the road, no people around. And I sat with my dogs on this rocker and I said, what is this? I retired to have a life, to be able to go out and have coffee and do things with people. What is this? And it threw me into a slump. I felt like I had gone from top operator at my company to a useless senior citizen. And it really, it really rocked me. But as God promises in Jeremiah 29, 11, he had a plan for me that I didn't know. So um, I became chaplain in the Good Sam Club and I thought that was what he wanted me. And I said, finally, I'm in ministry again. But that wasn't what his plan was. So I would take just holiday trips each year, like maybe Christmas. The most I went was maybe four or five weeks from in the motorhome. But last year I took my big venture. I, I left home in May. I covered eight states by June, and I just was having a ball. ball. And I said, this is my life. And five weeks later, I was in Iowa, and I got T-boned, and my motorhome got totaled. So there at the scene, I prayed with the cop, and I said, God's going to work this out for my good. In Romans 8, 28, it promises me. And I was crying, and he says, are you hurt? And I said, no, my trip is over. But God had a plan. It wasn't over. Well, this is Thursday, June 23rd. We left Idaho and we're in Utah. Isn't that beautiful? Heading to Sierra RV where we were to get some work done on the motorhome. However, there's the motorhome on the back of a tow truck after being broadsided. We don't understand why this happened, but God does. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful scenery, and thank you for what you have in store ahead for us. 
So I had them tow me to Utah, where I sat for five weeks in the broken motorhome with ups and downs, crying spells, happy spells. I called the dealer where I had bought the original one, never met him in person, and I told him the situation. And I said, it would be to God's glory if all the insurances came through to cover a new one. But yet at the same time, I didn't know if I wanted a new one. And so I wrestled and asked for prayer and wrestled with every with God about, I don't want to give up this one. It has an entertainment center and I don't want a new floor. That looks too wild. And I don't think I like the colors until finally I just said one day, God, if you work this out, I'll be satisfied with whatever you give me. And I felt like God was saying, that's all I needed to hear. Long story short, five weeks later, I had a U-Haul on the back of my car and I towed the U-Haul from Utah to Albany, New York to get the replacement. I get the chills as I'm saying it. It's the same model, upgraded, bigger engine, solar panel, upgraded, and guess what? I love the colors of the floor. I love No Entertainment Center. Been there, done that. God knew what I truly needed. And guess what else? Insurances came through, fully paid for, with a brand new seven-year warranty. And the dealer said, that is a miracle. That never happens. He was telling me it'll never happen. I said, it'd be to his glory. He said, it'll never happen. Well, you know what? He said, it's a miracle. God is a master of miracles. I said, I'm not surprised. So I went on to cover 13 more states. I was gone six months. Wow. This year, I left May again, two days later than last year. And I've been on the road 10 months. I'm still not home. I'm in this RV, I'm meeting people, but um, I, my pro proclamation this last year has been, God is blessing my latter years. I never expected it. I thought I was just waiting to die when I retired. And it's unbelievable what God is doing. So I always pray for God to lead me where he wants to use me and bless me. And I, when I'm driving down the road, I'm just praising God. I, I get the chills as I'm telling this because I look out and I just, people ask, where's your favorite place? I said, I can't answer that because I look out the windshield and I say, this is beautiful. And I go on to the next date. And I said, this is even more beautiful. This is even more. And I'm always praising God. It's just amazing. And not only that, the opportunities that he gives me every day. I pray for truckers and truck stops. I pray for people in Walmart parking lots. I pray for people at the dump station at Quartzsite. And then I get to meet people like Thad and Kayla that have a ministry that I never knew existed. And I told Pastor Lee and he said, right up your alley. <laughs> and so my husband, I wanna close with this. My husband used to say, you know, baby, you are smart. And you are great at your job, but you're not mechanical. And he was right. He took his last breath when he heard me tell someone in the medical field, I'm going to continue the RV ministry. And it was like, I felt like that was all he wanted to hear. And he took his last breath. And um, I can say now that I think he'd be proud of me. Because you know what? The next time my generator oil needs to be changed, I'll be 72 years old. And you know who's going to do it? Me. And so that's it. And I also, now that I meet Thad and Kayla, it has encouraged me to get in shape so that I can go hike in some of these mountains that God's bringing me to. So praise God. It is all for his glory. This is his motorhome, his RV, everything. And I also complained when he gave me the car that I tow. I said, God, I didn't want a big car like this. Well, guess what? It had all the towing system under it for a motorhome. And now I realize I needed a car that big because it's my storage. And I bring the dog's pen, everything. And we have a life. Like I said, the first day I got went, went to look for my original motorhome. I need a life. God gives life in more ways than one. Thank you for this opportunity.